What is going on everyone? It's Uzo here and in today's video we will be going over the maps that I personally use to train most of my characters, actually if not all of them, to level 200. We will be going over the level ranges that I use for them, what levels uh, they are, how approximately how much EXP you get, and some hints and tips and tricks as we go along as I see fit. So without any further ado, let us begin. So for the first map we have, right after you get whatever class you are to level 10, get your first job, get a couple skills, first place I head off to is Golem Temple 3. Now not 4 because that map's a little weird. Golem Temple 3 is more like the Golem maps that I'm used to, and these ones are fairly easy to kill at that level. I usually stay here from about 10 to 25, and they give somewhere around like 20 to 30-ish EXP per kill. Um, at this point, I wouldn't really use any EXP multipliers like Enjoyable Winters or 2 times Coupons. It's really just not worth it at this level. You level pretty fast already, so adding any of those to the mix doesn't really seem to add a whole lot of benefit because you won't really be staying here for more than half an hour. And if you're a burning character, you definitely won't be staying here that long because you'll hit 25, 27 um, long before you actually need to use any EXP multipliers. So for the next training map, we have Gold Beach Seaside 2. This map has amazing spawn rate, has a few platforms that you have to maneuver around, but all in all, it's a really good map to train in. You'll definitely stay here for quite a long time. I usually stay here from about 25, 27-ish to roughly level 40 to 45, depending on how well I can actually kill at the next map, which we will talk about. Uh, this map spawns plenty of runes, plenty of elites, which also boost your EXP gain here maybe i would pop an exp coupon maybe an enjoyable winter or a two times coupon but again i would really save those towards the later levels where you're going to see more of a benefit these maps you don't stay as long at so using exp multipliers like that just doesn't seem to be worth it in my opinion now the next map is one that we all know and love and that is silent swamp home of the drakes now this <sighs> I wish I could stay here for much longer, but by then the EXP gain versus how many platforms you have to maneuver and the fact that you usually have to leave at level 60 to go get your third job makes it easier to move to a, next, a newer map much sooner than I might like or might want. So for this, I usually stay here from about 45 to level 60, maybe mid 60s if I'm really feeling the map or I've gotten the good momentum going, but by then I'm usually ready to move on, go get some new skills and change maps uh, to something that it gives more EXP and it might be a little bit more easy uh, to move around the map and kill more efficiently. The next map is also a fan favorite of training maps and that is Sahel 2 with Sand Rats and Scorpions. Now these I go to at about 60 to 65. It's well under the level requirement for these monsters, but by then, depending on the gear that I've put on the character, how much I've star forced it and scrolled it, these may or may not be a couple hits depending on the class as well. But this is a flat map, great for Kishin. You can definitely get a lot of levels here. And by then, by now, I would probably think about popping a two times coupon or an enjoyable winter to make the process speed up quite a bit. Now the next training map isn't really a training map at all, it's actually a boss. At level 100, I head over to Zakum and I want to make sure I have as many EXP multipliers stacked as possible. So I'm talking runes, two times coupons, maybe a two times event, maybe some HS. Uh, you got link skill from Mercedes, you have character cards, you have legion bonuses. All of that stuff stacked up as much as I possibly can. One thing you want to know, there are a couple bosses in this training guide and you want to maximize them if you can by using as many EXP buffs and multipliers as you can. If you can kill them fast enough, you definitely get a huge boost of EXP when training your character to 200. So at the mid 110 levels to 120 levels, I will head on over to Moon Bunnies. Now, this is another semi-flat map with this weird kind of mountainous region, not really a mountain, more like a hill in the center of the map, which kind of makes it difficult in terms of spawn rate, but it's fairly flat. If you put Akana either on this platform on the top right or all the way at the top for a safe spot, you can definitely boost the spawn rate. Now these are gonna give you around 4,000 EXP each, and I will stay here until only about 135. Now I say only 135 because you can probably stay here till 140 if you wanna go the normal route. But the next map in the guide is definitely a place I love to train and it's honestly slept on by so many people. I'm really surprised no one goes there, but there is a bit of a caveat which I'll explain in the next clip. 
Now for some reason, I don't know why people don't go to this map, this map consistently has 10 burning stage levels, so it's doubly XP, there's runes that are abundant, there's a lot of mysterious veins in here, the spawn's pretty good, only downside I'd really say is, or downsides, are getting stuck in the lava, and then of course, you know, having strong elites, and the platforms, so those are pretty much the only downsides. Other than that, these things give like 15,000 EXP per kill. And if you find a rune on two times the two times coupon, you'll notice the EXP flying up at an alarming rate. So I'll stay here from roughly 135, 136 to probably the 150s. Um, now that Kerning Tower is out, that's also another good place to train. So, <laughs> hint, hint, guess where we're going next? Here we have a Star Force map, and these monsters give around 30,000 EXP per kill at level 155. Now you can compare that to Bane's, which is 20 levels before. And that's almost three times, actually, twice as much EXP um, per kill. But again, these will require more range, these will require more Star Force. One thing to also note, keep up with your Star Force, it pays off in the long run. But killing these will give you a lot of EXP, they definitely spawn runes, they definitely spawn uh, Inferno Dens, Poyo, Frito, all that good stuff, Elite Monsters galore, and they, the Elite Monsters give a lot of EXP as well because it does scale off of the base monster in the map. Chaos Horntail and Normal Horntail are the monsters or bosses that I used to train from 170 to maybe about 173 to 175. 175 places me at an optimal level for the next training area, and Horntail just gives a lot of EXP. You can, if you can kill Chaos Horntail, I highly recommend doing it. If you can stack EXP bonuses while killing Chaos Horntail, I highly recommend that you do it. He gives so much EXP, it's almost ridiculously, it's, it's unheard of. If you can't quite kill Chaos Horntail, you can go ahead and kill Normal Horntail. He won't give you as much EXP, but you will be able to kill him faster and move on to anything else that you're doing that day. Now the next map might be a little bit controversial. A lot of people don't train here for good reason. It's Second Drill Hall. It's not what it used to be, has a lot of platforms. Spawn is eh, all right. More for a mobile character, um, I would say you'd want to train at this map. But since no one trains here, it's always at 100% burning, which means you always get your double EXP boost, and then you can stack that with, again, runes and two times coupons and link skills and all that good stuff. And the levels will start to pick up. But you do want to keep in mind, this is a 120 Star Force map. So if you haven't been keeping up with your Star Force, you'll have to take a small break to start leveling up your Star Force, which means grabbing some spell traces, tracing up your gear, and getting them to probably about 10 stars a piece in order for you to reach that 120 mark. The next and final training map is Forsaken Excavation Site 2. This map is fairly compact. Even though it has multiple platforms, three to be exact, they're all pretty close together and there's a convenient teleport that brings you to the top and you can just cycle your way down and cycle way to the right and repeat. This map, these give about 60,000 EXP a kill. They're fairly easy to kill. They're not Star Force mobs and they do give more than the uh, Star Force mobs at second drill hall. And honestly, I think everybody will pretty much agree from 180 plus, this is where you want to train. There are maps to the right and left that you can train at, but like the landscape of them aren't the best. There's a lot of platforms, long maps where monsters can spawn in random locations or not as compact. So training there might be a little more difficult and a lot more time consuming than training at a map like this that's really compact. One thing to note, you will almost never find a 10 stage burning here because they're so like packed, these maps are so popular. And you will probably never find a map if you're trying to do this after two times has started. These maps are extremely popular to train at. But if you can hold your own or, you know, recruit a friend, if you can split up the platforms in this map, it will actually speed up your training, assuming you don't KS each other. So you might want to think about doing a little bit of party play here. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful. These are the personal training maps that I use or have used for at least the last seven level 200 characters that I've made and they have not failed me yet. And that's about it. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm thinking about turning this into a series. So stay tuned for maybe part two of this power leveling guide.